What's up, everybody? Uh, thank you, Alex, uh, for inviting me to the DJ hookup uh, to talk about this topic uh, and uh, you know co offer the best guidance support uh, we can, um, you know, based on our experience uh, to support our many friends who are DJs and performers in this community. Um, and so, uh, you know, I put together, you know, some uh, strategy and, you know, just some practical solutions uh, and tips uh, and links and references that, you know, you all will be able to kind of explore and reference for yourselves um so you know ask yourself why you're sitting here listening to me i appreciate that you're there uh, my name is gopi i'm a promoter and producer uh i've known um you know alex and the dj hookup uh for over 10 or 12 years uh, as we were organizers in a community organization called hip-hop congress and that's when we're doing a lot of community uh music-based events uh and, uh, you know, uh, over the years, you know, I've kept promoting and producing, you know, uh, physical events, uh, bars, nightclubs, tours, uh, and ultimately, you know, spent the better half or the, the most of this decade, uh, you know, producing and promoting uh, music festivals. Um, you know, in my time, uh, I've led production uh, at festivals um, like Coachella and Stagecoach, uh, and, you know, hopped around 22 shows, uh, over the course of the year. Um, and, you know, through the latter half of this decade, you know, really kind of honed in and focused on brand partnerships, enabling that monetization in general, uh, and how we can use digital media and digital media assets to kind of strengthen the experience. Um, and, you know, we've had some fun and incredible successes in that, uh, you know, particularly with the Coachella brand, uh, you know, with the explosive growth of the YouTube live stream uh, in which, you know, I produced uh, many of the digital assets and some of the strategy uh, and, you know, fun projects where we got to debut, um, features like Snapchat stories and vertical video stories. Um, so in all that, uh, in the last few years, I went off and uh, created my own agency called Cusp. Uh, we support music festivals and live events nationwide. Uh, you know, we, uh, we focus on, you know, brand partnerships, uh, consulting on digital strategy and media uh, and comms and marketing to the fans. Um, so in, in a practical sense, um, you know, uh, my team and I are usually, you know, the folks that are sending you push notifications and loading content and designing websites and apps, um, and leveraging all those media tools and assets, uh, in effort of the festival's business model, the experience and our brand partners. So. Uh, based on that, you know, I was invited to, to chat with you guys here uh, and think about, you know, some practical ways that we might be able to, you know, think about this environment we're in now with COVID uh, and, you know, your guys' you know, work, you know, uh, every day as performers and DJs uh, and, you know, how you might be able to, uh, you know, make some uh you know benefits and light of the situation and continue to persevere so um you know a couple of little other factoids about me there um you know i wanted to make some disclaimers uh you know generally these recommendations are designed for like mobile djs nightlife djs uh independent performers you know I do quite a bit of work with, you know, uh, uh, brand partnerships uh, and, uh, and and major music festivals, but you know, solutions on that front are kind of complicated and enterprise level, uh, and probably you know a whole lot more than anyone needs for this talk. But uh, you know, know that you know, one, we offer those solutions, and two, you know, we're going to boil down and think about some of the best practices there uh, and how it works on, you know, that level uh, and how that 
basic principles might convert for you. Um, you know, everything that I'm kicking around here um, was, um, you know, based on being free or low cost. Um, you know, cash is tight all around for everybody. You know, even my business and events have been dramatically affected, um, you know, not allowing anyone to socialize. Um, so, you know, we're going to try to be nimble uh, in the things that we su uh, suggest. Um, know that, you know, one size doesn't fit all. So, you know, this is, you know, experience-based uh, guidance, you know, from the many campaigns that I've launched, um, but it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, need to uh, fit to a T uh, for your situation. Uh, and for that matter, you know, evaluate, you know, your strengths uh, and, you know, play to that and augment this, uh, you know, strategy to that effort. Um, and then, you know, lastly here, uh, just wanted to say, you know, cool DJs, you know, you know, often don't want to take any suggestions, uh, but, you know, this is a crisis, you know, sit back, reevaluate, you know, things that you've done, things you can be doing, you know, check the ego and use this as an opportunity uh, to find ways to better yourself in your career. Um, you know, Alex went through a lot of this in the first part of this. Um, but, you know, just wanted to quickly go over, you know, the moment and environment we're in, um, you know, all our social events have been impacted by COVID-19, um, restricted movement and socialization prevents us from doing our job. Um, and, you know, probably everyone's relevant event-based revenues are dissipating and disappearing pretty quickly. Um, I'm assuming, you know, as a result of that, there's a lot of availability out there uh, with, with your gigs and times and times you're typically working. Uh, and it's uh, probably, you know, quite uncertain when we're going to get back to work. So, uh, you know, considering all those environmental factors, you know, I'm sure everyone is here because we've you know, seeing kind of an explosion of new behaviors out there in reaction to that. Um, you know, we see our friends and our media partners live streaming, families on Zoom and Skype and FaceTiming each other, um, and people really leveraging the newest live streaming and meeting video technologies uh, to, you know, fill the void uh, you know, for their connectivity and socialization. Um, so that said, you know, digital engagement across the board is like sky high, right? And, you know, it's still a bit early to tell, but, you know, we're seeing screen times up 40% uh, across a lot of media outlets, um, seeing some things where e-commerce are, you know, hitting 70% more. I read about Microsoft a few days ago, you know, having 700% increased engagement on Xbox Live. So, you know, people are craving connectivity. They're at home. They have, you know, incredible hardware and bandwidth, and they're looking to connect um, to, to, to digital media, to music, uh, to something visceral. So, um, you know, uh, in that, you know, I, I take a step back to quickly kind of review your objectives on how you want to, uh, you know, connect with fans and audiences and clients in this time um, and problem solve for the situation you're in. Uh, you know, sure, I know we have a lot of ground to make up uh, for our revenues and, you know, maintaining our businesses and uh, environments. Uh, but, you know, we also don't want to get, you know, too salesy and transactional in this process. Uh, you know, I think we should all be cognizant that, you know, everyone, you know, is burdening this together. So, you know, I would encourage everyone to include, you know, uh, their community uh, in their kind of strategy and outreach uh, in this time. Um, you know, would encourage everyone to evaluate all their marketing assets, you know, your website, your email list, uh, your big social media channels, uh, get an understanding of, you know, what's popping, what's not, where you want to improve. Uh, and if there are places to improve, use this time uh, to brush up all those marketing assets. Um, and, uh, you know, use this 
opportunity to continuously engage your audience and your clients uh, and, you know, kind of have a drip campaign of content, stay relevant uh, and timely and, you know, build relationships uh, through this time that are going to pay you some dividends downstream because, you know, people know and see that you've shared this experience together. Um, you know, think about, you know, your brand and identity a little bit, you know, like, are you happy with, you know, where you're positioned in the market as a nightlife DJ or a touring DJ or a performer? And if, uh, if you're not, you know, think about how you might want to reposition that and use things like, you know, live streaming to communicate that. Uh, I was speaking to my uh, longtime friend and resident DJ Alfalfa from the Coachella Valley the other night. And, you know, he was telling me his uh, series of quarantine mixes, uh, you know, have allowed him to really kind of show his versatility uh, in the genres he likes to play and the depth um, of, you know, his set list. Um, and, and he's seen uh, an incredible response from his regular, uh, you know, uh, event clients, um, you know, kind of reacting and sharing those moments and experiences for him. Uh, so in addition to that, you know, he thought this was an incredible learning experience uh, that he was, you know, didn't leverage so much prior to this, uh, but now uh, is a new tool in this tool belt uh, moving forward. And I, you know, I encourage everyone to, one, again, use this as an opportunity to say something about yourself and learn something new. Uh, but all those things said, you know, we need to make some money. We need to cover some ground. You know, I don't know that, you know, through a live streaming campaign, you can make all of that up, but you can definitely make a dent and find ways to convert back to your core business, you know, DJ bookings. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk about ways to diversify the offering, increase bookings, talk about e-commerce, you know, merchandising uh, and, and tipping and ways to drive revenue on that front. Um, so I think we got two of those, um, strategy, you know, we're not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, I bring this up, uh, because this is like a traditional kind of sales funnel. I'm calling it a fan funnel. Um, you know, you might have fans that you're trying to cater to. You might have regular, you know, clients that you're trying to cater to. Um, but in the end, you know, in producing these experiences and campaigns, you know, these are the motions that you're essentially going to ride through uh, to find the engagement and convert on that engagement uh, for your monetary uh, success and value uh, here. So, you know, I bring this in here because it kind of talks about the different phases uh, and, you know, how you should be thinking about this. Um, from a distribution, a marketing, uh, positioning, branding perspective, uh, driving that engagement, you know, sky high and curating your economy or a community and clients uh, into your uh, live streaming or media campaign, and then hopefully finding ways to convert on some of that interest. So, you know, this is kind of the lens and scope. Uh, in which I look at, you know, the strategy and campaign and, you know, down below, you know, is just like a little tool to help us kind of track along on that. Um, so strategies, you know, we kind of talked about, you know, know, know your cash, you know, uh, hopefully you did your taxes and you're going through those motions. Uh, but uh, you might want to take this time to sit back, evaluate, you know, your, your revenues uh, from your DJing and performances over the last, you know, calendar year or up year to date and uh, do some analysis on that. You know, what came from nightlife bookings, what came from mobile DJing, you know, what came from, you know, different aspects of your offering and, you know, try to create, you know, a some sort of cash flow projection or short term goals on, you know, having a realistic sense of where you're going to lose some of that revenue. Uh, and how you might want to start putting some objectives together in, in, in making up some of that revenue. Because if you don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going, and you don't know what's being done. So without dwelling on it too much, I encourage you to kind of take a dig 
at you know your revenues and how this might impact it and how you might want to mitigate it. Uh, that'll influence your strategy. Um, we talked about evaluating your marketing assets. You know, target where the engagement is. You know, if your folks are on Instagram, you know, campaign for that. If your folks are on Twitch or Facebook Live, campaign for that. The numbers are there. Uh, you know, all those analytics are being offered on all platforms, and you know, you know what converts for you or not. So, you know, even though you might come up with a campaign that goes across a lot of channels, doesn't mean you can't prioritize ones that are making an impact for you. Uh, and all that kind of basically goes along with knowing your audience. Uh, and then, you know, I think kind of evaluating that, you know, where your engagement is, what your goals are, you know, uh, really being clear about your objectives and setting up a plan against that. And that's ultimately a strategy. So, you know, wanted to dive in a little bit deeper on live streaming in particular, um, you know, being the hot topic uh, and, um, you know, kind of think about ways that you can be a bit more intentional or uh, increase your distribution wider uh, or leverage some tools out there to help you make better, more engaging feeds, um, you know. One, I think if you're going to start a live streaming campaign, you know what your objectives are, think creatively about that. But, you know, uh, I would say be intentional, you know, don't just go, you know, live, you know, every moment you can, you know, have a plan, execute on it, give yourself time. You know, if you're going to schedule a live event or stream, you know, promote that 48 hours in advance. Uh, you know, there's RSVP and reminder tools on YouTube. There's other ones out there uh, that are specific RSVP tools um, or email lists, you know, and sending notifications to your list. Like, be intentional, announce that you're doing the programming well in advance and help your fans and audiences anticipate and plan for it. Uh, and then also gives you an opportunity to campaign and drip some content to some of your, you know, clients and friends uh, that are going to help you be promotional partners in this effort. Um, and, you know, kind of any, any little bit helps, any resharing, streaming, promos, those are all promo, promotional partners that you could be collaborating on a local level and amongst the community that makes the biggest impact for you. Um, so, those those are the you know in in some there is you know once you kind of figured out your stream and how you want to approach it what you want to get out of it you know market it with intention and with the plan is what we're getting at uh rsvps help you know convert on something and re-engage folks once you go live um you might want to consider you know boosting uh promotional media or the live stream itself with small ad spends to kind of like increase the distribution. Maybe that's something you might want to consider if it's in your ability, you know, short term as you, you know, are developing an audience um, and then long term, maybe kind of phase it out if you find some organic, uh, you know, growth. Um, and then, you know, also, you know, with marketing and then in general, but, you know, pre-show marketing and live, you know, just interact with users, you know, in real time, you know, make make them feel invited uh, and answer their questions, uh, you know, reward them with, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, anything, uh, you know, content or playlists or, 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 or something uh, to get, you know, action engagement. How are they going to help you promote this before? Uh, how are they going to help you get to fundraising goals? Um, you know, you got to, you know, rally uh, your audience. Um, so promote, promoters promote. Uh, live streaming solutions, you know, we're going to get into some meat and bones here, you know, focus on the production, talked about goals, strategy, marketing, you know, what tools are we using? Um, and, you know, firstly, you know, I wanted to kind of keep it simple, stupid, you know, and, you know, if the goal is just to go live amongst, you know, groups or defined audiences, or you're just trying to, you know, develop, you know, let's say your skills or your content, 
or your voice, um, you know, you could use any of these solutions. You know, Moment House, I spoke to a few weeks ago. They just went live recently. Um, they created a really simple solution uh, to create paywall videos. So, and, and you could set this thing up in like 30 minutes flat. A Stripe account cash is deposited directly to you. Um, and you can create, you know, little situations where people pay to watch your video stream um, on the fly, essentially. Uh, they keep about 20%, so it's a revenue share, but it's a free product and service and something worth exploring. Um, I researched another product, haven't used it, called Sats High. Uh, looked pretty cool. Again, super simple. You basically go live, they create events for you. There's a little chat functionality. Interesting thing I thought here was, you know, they take all like the tips uh, and the payments for the paywall in Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, with all the volatility and the uh, invasive governments these days, um, I thought it was interesting that you can kind of stream and monetize to a global audience and receive, you know, that payment in Bitcoin. Um, pushing on, Manicam. Uh, this was like a really simple solution, uh, you know, uh, for I think really designed uh, for, you know, really anyone to be able to leverage. Uh, think about it in the same way you think of Wix or Squarespace for websites. Um, you know, it has, it's really user friendly. It can redistribute and do graphics and, and, and basically broadcast out for you. Um, there is a, a, you know, a, a monthly fee and it's all kind of web-based, software-based, but something you might want to investigate. So those are the simple solutions. Uh, pushing on a little bit uh, into live streaming solutions. Uh, video calls and groups, uh, you know, we've seen all this all over the internet, you know, those of us in business and other forms have probably been dragged into a ton of these, um, but these are incredibly powerful tools that are free and to some extent and available to everyone. I bring them up here because, you know, in the idea of diversifying your offering, you know, consider leveraging these sort of tools like Google Hangout and Zoom uh, to create more like private audiences. Um, and how can a mobile DJ, you know, use his skills as a curator and a community organizer and a social linchpin uh, where they're providing services to families and birthdays and events and weddings how can they still provide some of that value in curating for some of their best clients, friends and families, you know, private hangouts uh, where, you know, families stuck in different homes can connect together still. You know, people still need to celebrate birthdays. People still want to celebrate weddings. Uh, and, you know, although their physical plans may change, you know, you might be able to develop an offering uh, to continue being that host and providing some music and environment and connecting those people. So these tools are free and widely distributed, you know, so all the tios and tias and, uh, you know, aunts and uncles can, uh, you know, uh, access this without being overly complicated. So Zoom super popular, has some fun features where you can kind of like change your backgrounds and stuff. Um, there's uh, limits to the free uh, features, you know, up to 100 users, um, but uh, they have a 40 minute runtime. After that, you kind of cancel out before you have to use premium features. Google Hangouts, um, obviously, damn near everyone has access to their Gmail or Google account. Uh, there's free options that are, you know, just native to all those things. Um, but if you're like a G Suite user or you do your, you know, Google Docs things with your little brand or company, uh, you know, I just saw a program where Google Hangouts offering their enterprise version of Google Hangouts, which, you know, offers a lot more tools and features and they get up to 100,000 users if you're, you know, got it like that. Uh, the one thing I do like about Google Hangouts, super easy to use. And it has very wide distribution because lots of people have their Gmail accounts already on deck. So all I'm saying is we don't need to overcomplicate things. You know, there's ways to do video and generate video revenue off video, even with these simple solutions. Uh, and if you wanted to include call to actions, uh, 
you know, for fundraising or tip jars, you know, you could always leverage simple tools like PayPal, Venmo, uh, uh, Cash App uh, to, you know, make sure, uh, you know, people are tipping. Give them that opportunity to support you or uh, fundraise for local causes. It doesn't have to always be some big multinational uh, you know, organization, you might want to fundraise for the local business down the street that you're trying to help out. Uh, and, you know, people might want to be a part of that journey with you, um, you know. Uh, so, you know, these are more than sufficient tools uh, in tackling things at that level. But let's say we did want to step it up, you know, and live stream really wide and, and leverage some of the known tools out there, you know, we got to talk about the big dogs, you know, and uh, the people that really kind of innovated in the live streaming space, you know, my good old partners at YouTube, uh, we've done a lot of cool work together. Uh, they obviously offer, you know, the industry's best video products uh, and really kind of figured out, you know, monetization of this content well before anyone. Uh, they have the most viewers, a global audience, uh, distribution like you wouldn't believe on every app, phone, uh, smart TV you could imagine. Uh, very easy and intuitive to access that content at any time. Uh, and, you know, building subscribers on YouTube is a very valuable thing, not just for your live streaming content, but maybe for your other promotional videos or content uh, that you might have uh, and you know live can help you know drive you know subscribers to your video channel which you might find other benefits from um, you know there's promotional features in YouTube you know take advantage of that info space the you know the ability to do uh, little links and call outs in your video streams you know use all those uh, abilities to push people to merchandising or sponsors or email lists, uh, any, any way you can drive people down further in your fan funnel. Um, you know, YouTube has some great ability to do that. Um, as well as, you know, live streaming, they have chat features now uh, where you, you or a friend of yours can engage your audience. Um, there's some merchandising and fundraising features in YouTube, but I think you have to be a part of the official artist program over there, which generally you need 10,000 subscribers and above to qualify for. But they do have some ability with preferred partners to merchandise, uh, you know, T-shirts or gear alongside your streams um, or even fundraise for some designated nonprofits. Um, as well. So you might want to explore those if, if, if you're in the program or have over 10,000 subscribers. But, you know, the big dog that I think is really timely and relevant right now is Twitch. Uh, you know, again, you know, both of these two have battled it out and created a lot of feature parity between the two. And they've maybe kind of ultimately curated a little bit different audiences. Um, but they have a lot of comparable features, you know, ultimately, and we'll talk about this in following slides, you know, we can choose to distribute to multiple, if not all of these channels uh, concurrently, if we wanted to and had the, uh, you know, bandwidth and capability to, and we'll kind of talk about how to do that. But back to Twitch, you know, it's uh, free. Uh, you know, is backed by Amazon. Amazon owns the thing, which actually, you know, brings up some interesting monetization features uh, because people can connect their Amazon Prime accounts. And, you know, there's a ton of folks with Prime accounts uh, and they're easy to spend on it, which is why Amazon is killed e-commerce. Um, lots of viewers, you know, really respectable, really good promo features in like driving viewership. Uh, they've done a great job at that. You know, you could build your subscribers, your channel. They do have advertising revenue programs. Obviously that only matters if you're clocking in some stream viewers and, you know, have some scale. The other, you know, feature in Twitch is they kind of have like a tipping feature, you know, bits 
um, which allow you know uh, users to convert in, into a virtual currency essentially and give you little tips as you know let's say they might be reacting to content or just wanting to support you um, so that is something that is not readily available on many other features or uh, platforms natively and could be an interesting way to drive some additional revenue um, they have very cool promo features, you know, they have like playlisting and ability to pass streams from person to person. So if you had a crew or posse, you know, it'd be a good way for everyone to promote each other. And, um, and, and, you know, what Twitch has killed it at and excelled in is just like live engagement and real time engagement tools, you know, those chat features you know, jump into the chat, curate it, build relationships, sell through um, anything you got uh, into there. And then, you know, Twitch being Amazon, you know, has got apps and distribution just about anywhere you can be at this point. Um, but it's a little bit, you know, uh, new order engagement, a lot of young viewers, lot, you know, a lot of the gaming community really, you know, uh, caught on to Twitch and championed it early on. Uh, so, uh, you know, much like Facebook in a way, it has like a pretty specific demographic. That doesn't mean that the tools aren't relevant to what you're doing and what you can do and the fact that you can put some people on to the platform and the fact that you're using it. Uh, Facebook Live, something I've been asked about, you know, again, for the most part, it seems like, you know, chasing feature parity with the other platforms. Uh, if you have an audience and clientele that is Facebook heavy, you know, based on demographics uh, or who's doing the buy-in, uh, then I would encourage you to distribute your stream there. Uh, it's more than sufficient in engaging the audience, delivering a live feed, having, you know, commenting and chatting uh, live. Uh, but it doesn't offer the, you know, uh, advertise monetization tools that YouTube and Twitch might uh, or the engagement features. Uh, but again, if you have, uh, if it would be beneficial for you to uh, reach your audience and clients there, I would encourage, uh, you know, at least distributing to it unless it's your primary. Uh, been asked a lot about Patreon, you know, cool new company relatively, uh, you know, they basically, you know, have a revenue share freemium model uh, where, you know, they've created a really incredible set of tools to kind of monetize digital media content uh, on behalf of, let's say, influencers and, you know, uh, personal brands uh, and, um, you know, Everything is kind of mobile and transactional. They do have some live streaming capability, but it's leveraged through a partner integration with a company called Crowdsource, I believe. So it's not necessarily native to platform, but I bring it up because if you have other forms of content that you're looking to monetize uh, and, and you want to build an audience that is like subscribing to you, uh, then, you know, offering that same audience live streaming solution or driving people to it to kind of understand the breadth of your op options um, could be just a good way to build a solid base uh, that of, 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 of clients and fans that, you know, actually pay you for access. Um, so things to investigate for everyone. Again, in my theory, I, I distribute content as far and wide as I can and get it in front of as many eyeballs as I can. And, you know, the places that are priority to my brand or strategy, you know, I hone in on, you know, how do I have help uh, on managing, you know, community management uh, from chats to social media uh, against all these things to keep people engaged. Uh, so, we're going to talk about, you know, how we're going to get those streams to multiple places shortly. You know, wanted to talk a little bit about encoding and software. You know, a lot of those platforms we spoke about previously, you could just fire up with your webcam and your laptop mic. But if you wanted to take things a step further uh, to drive engagement and to hone in your offering, you might want to look at some of these softwares 
Uh, some are desktop based, some are, you know, web services, uh, but uh, the encoding and broadcasting software will allow you to either, you know, add multiple cameras and mixing boards, graphic overlays, integrate multiple media streams, uh, and broadcast and distribute uh, that content to multiple channels. Uh, OBS Project is a free open source software. Um, you can download directly on their website. It's enterprise grade. I've seen this used at many shows and festivals. Uh, that said, you know, it might take a little bit of investment learning the software. You know, I would say in difficulty level, probably very, you know, similar to like, Adobe Photoshop or, uh, you know, Logic Pro or, you know, um, Ableton. Um, and, uh, but, you know, it'll, it'll offer you a full breadth of options on, you know, creating a professionally produced live stream uh, and distributing it out. Uh, and it's free. Uh, Streamlabs is more of a web-based, user-friendly, you know, platform. Uh, it's 12 bucks a month, you know, you, it's like full service. This thing will like encode, distribute, do graphic packages uh, and get, get your stream where you need it to be. Uh, and then offer, you know, even options for, you know, multiple remote feeds, you know, to be integrated into your, think of like a, a situation where you have a host or, you know, you want to include, you know, maybe your client into the stream. Uh, Streamlabs is an interesting solution for that. And same as XSplit. So just uh, XSplit, for the most part, I think, you know, really ramps up in the premium features early on. Uh, but, you know, these two kind of service the same space. Um, and, you know, once you have your content looking good, feeling good, you know, kind of encoded and mixed and, you know, streaming out to the universe, um, you could always use any of these solutions, uh, like, for instance, if you're using OBS, uh, the software we just talked about earlier, you're going to need, you know, Restream or uh, Castrio to, you know, distribute that to all these uh, different Twitches, Facebooks, and YouTubes concurrently and, and, and do a rebroadcast live. Um, if you use, you know, uh, um, the other options, Streamlabs and XSplit, they do some of this, maybe not all of it, or sometimes not as good. Uh, so you might wanna just kind of toy around and, and see what these guys have to offer. Uh, but you know, a typical solution would be something like, you know, rigging up your setup and your production, your cameras and lighting and stuff, getting all that stuff into OBS as software, and then using something like Restream.io uh, to uh, Restream. Restream has a nice, you know, free tier option where you can kind of distribute multiple streams to outlets in a really uh, user-friendly way and seems to be, you know, the leading solution. Uh, there's Ustreamer, uh, which also gives some free access. Uh, the platform's still in beta, but working. And then there's Castrio, premium options only, but I haven't used it but it looks like it's fully featured, a little bit more pro grade, um, and has a lot of incredible features in distributing your content. Uh, the big question though, a lot of these other solutions in restreaming do not do Instagram live. And you know, especially here in North America, but beyond, you know, there's a ton of engagement on Instagram live, uh, and people going live you know, direct on their phones. Uh, you know, there's a lot of value in capturing that engagement uh, and helping convert it to your wider and broader streams. Uh, and uh, you're going to want to use some of these tools to kind of hack your ability to broadcast live to Instagram. Instagram doesn't make it easy like the other platforms to be restreamed to. They don't have, you know, API developer access. Um, so these, both these solutions have a little bit complicated way of like screen grabbing and, you know, using your video inputs and outputs, uh, to kind of hack a screencast, um, and distribute it to IG live. Uh, Yellow Duck is a software that you download onto your computer and you'll need like a, a, a tool like OBS to leverage. Uh, so you'll need to learn those things. 
or Lola TV does a lot of the same services we talked about before in a user-friendly format, the ability to, you know, uh, add graphics and redistribute the, the, the stream to all channels. And they have a solution and workflow to stream to IG Live as well. And that software starts at $10 a month and is uh, web-based. So uh, I do think it's important to be on Instagram Live. Uh, and uh, But Instagram Live, I think, is really short form content. You know, people are only going to tune in for so long on their phone. So, you know, if people are doing some cleaning or some work uh, in their homes, uh, they want some more passive. So, you know, make sure you're always doing call outs and shout outs for people to find you on, let's say, YouTube or Twitch or Facebook Live. Um, so they don't have to be glued to their phones the whole time. Uh, so, you know, would encourage you to get in front of Instagram, uh, at least this way you have the ability to, um, you know, uh, take advantage of the eyeballs and the awareness that the platform can offer you in a professional way, better quality video and audio. Um, this is, might be a little bit more advanced, but you know, I want to talk about you know just the visual landscape of your feed. You know, let's keep it interesting. You know, show the nicest part of your home or your living room or studio. Uh, you know, put some set design into it with what you got around. Uh, make sure there's some callouts, but and and you leverage you know graphic overlays and all the software platforms to promote things. Uh, but there's some interesting ways that you know, you can spice up your feed. Uh, you know, I was talking to my good friend, uh, Major Gabe, who's been a, a resident DJ here in the Southern California community for a VJ for a very long time and has done a ton of my events, uh, you know, and, you know, he was, he had been working on a beat cinema, uh, his crew and posse uh, stream and, you know, just simply using a projector in that scenario. If you got one lying around the house, you know, you might want to research how you can use it to, you know, create little video loops or reels or logos and, you know, project onto walls or surfaces or yourself um, through your live stream, you know, or use it for creative content. That's a really like lo-fi hacky way of getting some, you know, visual stimulation going on. Um, you know, we talked about using the graphic capabilities and the softwares. Um, there's also a couple other softwares you can research that our friend Sean Major Gape suggested, Spout and Siphon, Windows and Mac. Um, these are interesting real-time visualizers uh, and softwares you can integrate into, let's say, your stream coming out of OBS. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll think of like Winamp or like a screensaver, you know, it'll react to the music you're playing and visualize in real time and mix the video streams. Uh, you know, this is probably a little bit more complicated in process, uh, process and might require, you know, an additional computer or processing power um, so that, uh, you know, your whole system doesn't go down. <laughs> um, you know, and that leads us to just like some production tips as you're considering, you know, producing your live stream uh, in effort of driving engagement. Uh, this is all to keep people tuned in and liking the product, following, tipping, and, you know, generally being invested in what you have to offer. So, you know, take some pride. You know, consider, like we talked about, set design uh, and what people are going to be staring at. You know, when you're thinking about your programming, you know, think about themes, times, context. Like, is this a brunch set? Is this a post-dinner set? Is this themed, you know, reggae or dance hall? You know, show some of that versatility. Give people some diversity. You know, let people get invested in some of the you know variety of things that you have to offer um and you know and create some series out of that in the same way you would in nightlife you know programmatic content you know build a brand a theme a series tell people to tune in um some other tips get some help this is a whole lot to do you know you're a dj you got a set a set to figure out um, you know, if there's any housemates or DJs or friends or girlfriends or wives or boyfriends, anybody, you know, rope them in, see if they might support you from community management or technical help or graphic packages 
um, you know, it could be a team effort. Uh, and that's probably the way that you're going to get your hands around this best. Um, I would encourage everyone to, uh, you know, engage their audiences live in real time, uh, you know, react to them, reward them for their participation, you know, unlock some content, ring a bell, uh, tell them that you're releasing a mixtape if they fundraise. Um, you know, there's ways that you can help elevate and make this a unique moment, engage audience participation. Um, think about your bandwidth, where you're broadcasting from. Do you have the capability uh, to even deliver this? You might want to call your you know, internet service provider uh, to see if you can get an additional you know, tier. Um, or even if you're broadcasting off your phone on IG Live, you know, just make sure that you're in a place with a reception. Um, think about lighting, you know, uh, most video is really reliant on just lighting situations, um, camera quality, if you're really trying to step it up, multi-camera, think about angles, play, play to your strengths, uh, like we talked about before, if you're a turntablist, you know, I want to see those hands or that mixer, you know, or if you're a VJ, you know, uh, want to see the environment you're creating and maybe, you know, how you're mixing it down. Just think about, you know, how you might be able to increase uh, the quality of the camera uh, or multi-cam setup to do some narratives. Um, audio quality as DJ, super important. You know, try not to use the internal microphones on your laptops and phones. You know, find some direct inputs uh, and get a, a decent test out there. Uh, and generally, you know, test, test, test your whole stack of software and solutions try it out before you go live for the first time and uh, make sure everything's uh, working to plan. Maybe even consider some backup plans if you need to as things go awry in live often. Um, you wanted to talk a little bit about some best practice. Uh, Mark here, Mark Ribier, I believe is how you pronounce the name. Um, has been hitting the internets and been doing some touring. Unfortunately, his tour was canceled uh, down to Australia. Uh, and, uh, you know, he announced a few weeks back, uh, you know, a live streaming schedule. You know, he put it out like a touring schedule. He did two hours of original content a day for four days, streamed it onto YouTube. Uh, and, you know, when I took a look at it, I saw about uh, close to you know three quarters of a million uh, you know uh, views on the at least the video on demand, if not more, live. Um, and then I saw him on social posts that that you know they had gotten almost thirty one hundred items of merch sold uh, against that engagement, um, which is about like a point four or zero point four in engagement and conversion which is not bad considering those merch items and t-shirts probably have like a $25 gross value. So thought it was interesting. You know, they sold quite a bit. One thing that I really like about his uh, uh, stream is because uh, one, obviously it's real time. It's unique. He's reacting to the audience through these phone calls and creating music. People see his process, but even better, you know, these call to actions and these graphic overlays, you know, driving people to the website to see all his offerings and get invested, driving people directly to the merchandise, you know, link uh, and converting on that, you know, calling him in. Maybe there's data capture collection in those scenarios, uh, an RSVP or a call in or a, a chat, um, you know, and then in this top right over here, he has his sponsor, you know, that's supporting him. And, you know, thinking about sponsors and your stream, you know, we can all chase down the big brands and all that all we want, but don't think of sponsorship, you know, necessarily exclusive to that realm. You know, think about it as community partners, uh, local businesses, you know, things that speak to the audience that you have access to. Uh, you know, you don't have to have the big bucks, but you can use some small sponsorship revenue or some way to transact and earn referral business from that sponsor uh, to start building the case that you know you you do drive metrics and you do have an act 
offering and an activation to offer any of your partners. You know, building that case, showing that conversion is what helps you renegotiate for better sponsorship opportunities. Um, so just thought it was really interesting on how Mark approached this uh, and effective uh, and, you know, things you might want to consider in your campaign. Uh, some more tools, you know, now we're talking about converting, moving into monetization, you know, we have marketed this show, we've produced something really cool and live, people are tuned in, uh, how do we convert on that? Uh, you know, uh, one, you know, I think, you know, being really chatty and engaged is helpful, but at some point, you know, we need some transactions going on here to make some revenue. Uh, and 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 survive. So you know, one thing I'd like everyone to think about is just kind of their e-commerce. You know, and like, how can you drive people to your website or directly to shopping carts where you have a diverse offering of merchandise or booking or DJ sets or albums or or art or whatever? Uh, and how can people uh, you know support you? by uh you know getting some cool products or services and so you know wanted to mention bandcamp these guys have been around forever uh you know really beloved by the independent and music community uh you know typically selling your music on bandcamp is by measurably better than selling music on itunes or amazon or even spotify uh, you know, because you get to keep more of the revenue, 80 to 85 percent typically. Um, but they've even waived all fees in this environment uh, in COVID uh, so that artists and independents can keep all of their revenue. Uh, and, you know, I bring them up because not only do they sell songs and albums and things that you have to fulfill for yourself, that you got to create the inventory and ship it off. But you, you, you can do list, you know, all sorts of merchandising and retail items along with your digital media. And so uh, it has great tools in, fulfill, in, in, in taking those orders and servicing it and building a relationship with your fans. Beyond, you know, Shopify is a leading product in e-commerce. Uh, you can build really quick shopping experiences that service any sort of things that you're trying to sell. Uh, there is a, a light package that is about a hundred bucks a year, uh, and they do take credit card transaction fees like most people do. Um, but in the end, if you have inventory like T-shirts or merchandise uh, that you can sell, then you know selling it yourself using something like Spotify is going to drive a lot more revenue for you uh, than you know other options out there that we'll get into. Um, so Shopify for e-commerce, uh, Squarespace is a website builder. If you need to brush up your marketing assets and need a mobile optimized or uh, desktop website, Squarespace does it really cheaply and effectively. Uh, and if you have any design sense, you can effectively design it for yourself. They do have merchandising and commerce features as well that I've leveraged. Uh, and, uh, you know, they don't take any of that transaction in their paid plans. So uh, it might seem like a lot, but the fact that it's your domain name, possibly your email, uh, that it's your e-commerce tool and your website, uh, it's not a bad investment for the year and it's pretty simple to use. So these are all really cool solutions. If you have inventory, but creating inventory is expensive and time intensive. So I put together some solutions here out there where, you know, you can really offload that operation. And, you know, there's a couple businesses here that will actually create your merch uh, and ship and fulfill it all for you. Uh, they, they take more of the revenue because there's no risk or cost or really investment on your part other than designing good products that you think your fans will like. But ultimately they design the website or they have the page, it's all automated and you don't have to deal with customer support or building things at all. Uh, Bonfire is a really cool solution. We saw Mark used it. Um, it takes, uh, it even allows for fundraising and a tip jar. 
you know, typically I've researched, they take 40 to 55% of the gross and the rest goes directly to you. Um, Teespring's another cool service. Uh, they've been around a while, I can see, but, and they have a lot of cool variety of promotional project, uh, products beyond, you know, teas. Um, and they keep about 50 to 60% of the gross based on the calculator that I saw. Um, uh, and actually, you know, uh, when I say keep, that's on your part as an artist or performer or producer, that would be your revenue split uh, on, on leveraging any of these services. And then Amazon has a merch program. It might be impacted uh, by their backlog right now, and it is contingent on approval, but, uh, you know, they'll produce and fulfill your merchandise as well for you. Uh, but again, this is an easy way for you to get online. You know, if you're not comfortable for asking for tips, uh, then, you know, help people buy a cool shirt or a hat. You know, maybe they like your brand. Maybe they like your DJ name. Maybe they just want to be proud of you as a friend uh, and give them that opportunity to invest in you. Uh, and these are good tools uh, to leverage for that effort. Um, you know, Revenue from advertising, revenue from merchandise, revenue uh, from tipping, uh, you know, all sounds good and a lot, but it, if you don't have a lot of scale, it might not get you very far in replacing your core revenue. And so what I wanted to suggest here is getting you back to your core business, which is booking and scheduling you use all these media and the engagement and the campaigns that you're developing to drive interest in yourself, uh, your offerings uh, and, and your personas uh, and, 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 and stay engaged uh, with your people. And, you know, the other revenue streams are good for people to engage in, but, you know, I'm betting you want to get back to work. So make sure you update your website and your social medias with an ability to book appointments. Uh, there's a lot of softwares out there that, you know, do, uh, you know, gig and schedule booking. Uh, one of my favorites is, you know, Square Appointments. And Square, you know, obviously, you know, financial services product. So they can do other things like, you know, your merchandise uh, or transacting on site. So it's probably good to have a Square account. Uh, but I really like, you know, their ability to accept and schedule appointments. You put in your calendar or dates of availability. You know, fans can look for themselves you know, uh, when they might want to suggest a booking for you. So they give you the tools to integrate that on your website. And more importantly, they give you native tools to integrate that into things like Gmail, Google, and Instagram, where the engagement is, and people might, you know, be able to book you directly. Um, so I would, you know, I think ultimately use the content to drive folks to, you know, your core business. Uh, and if they veer off and buy a t-shirt or tip along the way, even better, that's the sales funnel, you know, drive them down as deep as you can go. Um, and then, you know, some of the last tips, you know, diversify your offerings, uh, and get scrappy, you know, uh, you might've gotten comfortable in a routine, uh, of, you know, where your revenues were coming from. Uh, now you need to, you know, be nimble and think about how you want to approach this you know consider discounting your rates uh, or deferred payments for really tried and true improving clients um you know think of trade of services as you're producing your stream and you need help and support you know how can you help create a mixtape for a loved one or set up a date night for families that are separated and find some people have time on their hands people need to barter you know, use this opportunity to, you know, trade your abilities as a curator and a host uh, to get things that are going to better your professional career. Um, I was thinking, you know, uh, help create better environments. You know, there's places that still have a lot of engagement. Uh, things might be getting tighter uh, on, you know, requirements. 
uh, but maybe there are situations you can find it yourself in where you uh, are, you know, providing music and environment to grocery stores or laundromats or pot shops uh, that, you know, you can help bring the stress level down uh, or, you know, even use those ops as an opportunity for your live streaming, you know, uh, live streaming from a laundromat sounds pretty cool to me, you know, uh, and fun uh, way to shake it up. Uh, so, you know, just think about, you know, where else, you know, what could be the atypical clients uh, that are having a lot of engagement right now? Uh, you know, think about, you know, content curation, you know, if your clients or venues or bars or even events, like how can you, you know, create a cheap offering that you may be merchandised through e-commerce uh, to curate playlists and deliver that uh, as a gift, you know, a digital gift to uh, fans and friends and family, uh, create custom live mixes uh, for birthdays and businesses. Um, that might uh, need some content to drip out there. Uh, and then lastly, you know, I would encourage everyone to be prepared for nightlife. You know, I think we're probably going to slowly ease up out of this at some point. And, you know, the big events and festivals and tours are not going to be able to move as fast as, you know, your pubs and bars and local promoters. Um, and, you know, get ready and prepare you know, for that opportunity, you might want to reach out to the venue and, you know, put some target dates or state your intention uh, or develop a brand or marketing or teams in the meantime to be ready uh, to strike uh, when that comes out. You might want to even think about, you know, as mobile DJs or event DJs, you know, how you might be able to offer bookings, you know, uh, of, of, of celebratory parties when this all lifts uh, or give people, you know, discounts to booking early uh, for later in the year uh, for their special occasions or, or, or parties with friends when this all lifts. So just some ideas to help stir up, you know, what you guys are thinking. Uh, you know, diversifying your offerings is a, is a cool way to update all of that on your web and make sure people can make quick bad decisions and, you know, sending you some loot along the way, uh, give people an offering at every price point and level from, you know, tipping to merchandise to booking. That way people can choose the way they want to invest in you and your offering. Uh, and, you know, uh, and, and always, you know, seek to better yourself in your streaming and your media. Uh, to drive that engagement and capture, you know, those eyes and ears. So that's me. I'm Gopi Sangha. I do digital strategy and brand partnerships. Uh, you know, I hope to see a lot more live streams from friends and family out there. And uh, feel free to give me a shout if I could be helpful uh, in any way. Or you need some uh, professional expertise on uh, uh, live streaming. We're putting some fun stuff together. Uh, which we'll be promoting uh, across all our channels soon enough here. All right. Thanks, everyone.